This is how most people learn Python. They watch a 20 hour tutorial on YouTube. They follow along and type the same code as the instructor. And when the tutorial ends, they have no idea how to build anything on their own. If I could go back and learn Python from scratch, I would skip all that nonsense. Today I will show you exactly how I would do it. I actually use this exact framework to learn C++ and Dart while working full time at Google. Let's do this. Before we dive in, you need to understand something that most beginners get wrong. Python is not one thing. It's three different things based on what you want to do. There are some core concepts that every programmer must know. Then there are advanced concepts for people going into software engineering. And finally, there are specialized libraries for data science and machine learning. If you are a complete beginner, you might think that you need to learn everything. That's the biggest mistake people make. They try to learn everything at once and end up learning nothing. So here is what we will do. We'll start with 20% that covers 80% of the use cases. Then we will layer on the specialized knowledge based on your career goals. Let's start with the core concepts. And when I say core, I mean stuff you will use every day, no matter what kind of Python developer you become, variables, data types, conditionals, and loops. If you have done any programming before, this should not take you more than a couple of hours. But here is where most tutorials waste a lot of time. They spend hours explaining what a variable is. You don't need that. Go to learnpython.org and do the interactive exercises until you can write a simple function without looking at documentation. Next up are the data structures, lists, tuples, dictionaries and sets. These four will show up in every single python program you write. Spend some time here. Understand when to use a list versus a tuple. Know why dictionaries are faster for lookups than lists. This is not just trivia. This will come up in your coding interviews. After that, learn functions. Not just how to define them, but how to write a clean function that does one thing well. Learn about default arguments and keyword arguments because python uses them everywhere. Finally, Learn classes and objects. I know object-oriented programming sounds scary, but Python makes it simple. You just need to understand the basics of classes, methods, and inheritance. That's it for the core concepts. If you can write a class, define methods, and use Python's built-in data structures, you have covered the fundamentals. Now here is what separates beginners from people who actually get hired. Advanced software engineering concepts. But before you panic, let me be clear. You don't need to master these before you start building. Learn the core concepts first. Build some projects, then come back and layer on these advanced concepts as you encounter them. First on the list is error handling with try and accept blocks. In the real world, your code needs to handle failures gracefully. Learn how to use catch exceptions and what to do when something goes wrong. Next. Learn file handling. Reading from files and writing to files is something you will do constantly as a developer. After that, understand modules and packages. Then there is decorators. This one trips people up. Some people find them tricky, but decorators are everywhere in Python frameworks. You don't need to write your own decorators immediately. Just understand how to use them. Finally, learn the basics of testing with PyTest. Writing tests is not optional if you want to work at a good company. If you're going into data science or machine learning, you need to know three main libraries. NumPy is for numerical computing. This is non-negotiable. Every data scientist uses NumPy because it makes working with arrays and matrices really fast. Spend a week getting comfortable with NumPy arrays, indexing, and basic operations. Next is Pandas for data manipulation. Pandas data frames are like Excel on steroids. You can read CSV files, clean messy data, and analyze it with just a few lines of code. Learn how to filter, group, and merge data frames. The next library is matplotlib or seaborn for visualization. Data without visualizations is just numbers on a screen. Learn how to create basic plots to communicate your findings. If you are interested in machine learning, you will eventually need scikit-learn for traditional ML algorithms and TensorFlow or PyTorch for deep learning. But don't jump into these until you have solid understanding of NumPy, Pandas, and matplotlib or seaborn. 
If you want to learn everything I mentioned in one place, I have been recommending Datacamp for years because it's much more interactive than reading tutorials or watching videos. You are actually coding from day one and not just passively absorbing information. Their Python programming fundamental stack is perfect for beginners. It covers everything from core concepts to modules and custom functions. You'll also build a project where you implement registration flow for app users. Once you have the basics down, you can level up with Datacamp's associate Python developer track. This one is designed to get you job ready as a developer. It dives deeper into real-world software development skills like file handling, error handling, and object-oriented programming. It also covers advanced topics like decorators, context managers, and regular expressions. You'll build command line tools, web scrapers, and more. These are exactly the kind of projects that matter on your resume. At the end, you can earn a statement of accomplishment to showcase your skills. If you want to learn Python fast and actually retain it, check out Datacamp. The link is in the description. But here is something nobody tells. Learning Python syntax is not same as learning Python. Most people coming from Java or C++ background write Python code that looks like Java written in Python syntax. That's a mistake. Python has its own idioms and patterns that make your code faster and cleaner. Let me give you an example. New Python programmers write loops like this. They create an empty list, then they loop items with a range and index. While iterating, they append to the list. This works, but it's not Pythonic. A Python programmer would use a list comprehension instead. One line of code that's easier to read and runs faster. The same applies to dictionary comprehensions. Instead of creating an empty dictionary and filling it with a loop, you can do it in one line. Then there is enumerate. If you need both index and the item in a loop, don't use range and manual indexing. Use enumerate. It's cleaner and less error prone. The zip function is another gem. If you need to iterate over two lists together, zip them. These patterns are not just about writing less code. They are about thinking in Python. Master these idioms and you will stand out. But none of this matters if you don't build projects. You can watch all the tutorials in the world and still not be able to code. That's because watching code is not the same as writing code. So here are three projects that will actually make you a strong Python programmer. For your first project, Build a web scraper, a web scraper that extracts data from a real website. Use the request library to fetch web pages and beautiful soup to parse HTML. Scrape something interesting like job postings from a careers page or product prices from an e-commerce website. Store the data in a CSV file using Python's CSV module. This project will teach you how to work with external libraries, handle HTTP requests and parse structured data. More importantly, you will learn how to debug when things don't work. Because trust me, the website structure will change and your scraper will break. That's when real learning happens. For your intermediate project, build a REST API using Flask or Fast API. Create a simple backend that can handle GET and POST requests. Maybe build an API for a book library where you can add books, retrieve book details and update information. Connect it to a database using SQLite which is built into Python. Learn how to structure your code into different modules. Write tests for your API endpoints. Deploy it to the cloud. This project will teach you how the real software is built. You will learn about routing, API design and database interactions. These are the skills companies actually care about. For your advanced project, Build a command line tool that solves a real problem. Maybe a tool that automatically organizes your download folder by file type. Or a script that monitors a website and sends you an email when something changes. Or a data analysis tool that takes a CSV file and generates a report with visualizations. Use argpass for command line arguments. Handle errors properly with try except blocks. Package your tool so that others can install it with pip. Add a readme with clear documentation. This project will teach you how to build a production quality code. You will learn about argument parsing, error handling and code organization. You will create something that you can actually use and put on your resume. But here is the truth that nobody wants to hear. Learning Python fast is not about finding the perfect course. It's about spending less time watching and more time building. If you can code for even two hours a day consistently, 
you will be job ready in a few months. But most people watch tutorials for two hours and call it a day. They never actually write any code by themselves. They never debug their own errors. They never experience that moment where their code finally works after hours of trying. That's where real learning happens in the struggle, not in the tutorial. So pick your path, core concepts, then advanced concepts if you want software engineering or core concepts then numpy and pandas if you want data science write python code that looks like python not java wearing a python costume do this for a few months and you will know more than people who have spent years stuck in tutorial hell if you want to know how i actually got hired at top tech companies watch this video my name is sahil and i'll see you in the next one